<laughs> you fuckers, you're already ruining my day. No, it's not. It's a Swedish cake. I bought it for my mother's birthday and there were some left. So I had to do my duty and finish it. But I can't because you guys are asking a bunch of questions. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm not really stalking anything. It's just like yesterday. I'm not even... I don't, I don't think I'm going to trade much. Like yesterday, only thing I traded yesterday was Okta. I bought some Okta late, uh, mid late day when it broke out of the highs of the day. I bought 7,000 shares. That's it. Like yesterday was an insane day. I was at the event filming. I, I, I was barely looking at, at the markets. And uh, like everything in my portfolio was, was up yesterday. Like everything. Or, or some, some things were like unchanged. But most of the stocks were up 3, 5, uh, some were up, like Opus was up like 20%, 20, you know, 30%, more than 30%. So, uh, I mean, I made like 700k yesterday just by holding a portfolio. That, that, that's the magic of a great market. Like, this, if this is an easy, you know, if there's anything as an easy dollar market, this is it. I don't know when it's going to end, but for now, things are like insane. So I don't really look to trade anything. I, don't, I just don't see any good setups. There are no good long setups. There are no good short setups. Nah, there are no bots. Guys, if you blame uh, bots on markets going up, you got to blame them on markets going down too. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were talking about the bots pushing the markets higher. No, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I misunderstood. Uh, oh, fucking bots. Yeah, okay, now I see. Uh, how do we block these guys? Uh, block, okay. So I hope I'm not blocking any, any of you legit guys. Okay, great. So I blocked these. There were two, right? Dun, dun. Okay, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Livongo. Uh, where would I move stops? I still have my stop. Actually, I'm gonna move it to the highs of the uh, lows of the breakout day. So, you know, I anticipated the breakout. I bought it one day earlier, uh, but now it's at the lows of the breakout day. Lows are two days ago. Yeah, David. You know what? That's a good idea. I am going to block you. You're so annoying. Go hang out with your losers. Your loser friends. Oh, wait. He's already hanging out with the losers. Damn it. Yeah, I have no moderators. I should probably get a moderator. <laughs> David, do you want to be a moderator in my chat? You will have unlimited power. <laughs> maybe if I get a few hundred uh, people in here, maybe I need a moderator. Hell no! Yeah, that's... <laughs> uh. He has Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> uh, let's see. P uh, short ALPN. Uh, no. Like, there were some insane intraday shorts yesterday. Like, the CLIR. I wish I had watched this one, at least. This was a day two. It was just so perfect. You know, it had a pop out of the gate, and it started peaking. You know, putting a high, lower high on the one-minute chart, and it... Uh, failed at VWAP, then it faded, retested VWAP, VWAP failed, and then it, you know, faded the rest of the day, and now it's gapping down. It was a very, very, you know, clean setup. I wish I'd traded that one, but I wasn't even looking at it. Uh, okay, anyway, I don't really see anything in the gapper land. There's a lot of these SPAC stocks moving. All right, uh, let's look at positions real quick. FMCI had a nice move yesterday. Uh, let's see, fast. Like everything, most things were up yesterday. 
hence my big uh, move in, in the accounts. Shopify gapping higher. Let's see. Let's keep seeing new highs every day. Amazing stock. Net had a big, big move yesterday. Opus had a big move. IDEX had a huge move. It almost doubled. Oh, unreal market. Unreal market. Unreal. I am watching this Nikola. I, it's it, it's uh, on both long and short watch. If it breaks below the range, I'm going to short it. Breaks above the range, I'm going to go long. Hopefully it goes sideways for today. And then breaks out or down tomorrow. That would be even better. Um... Uh, there could be a short, uh, short series airlines, cru cruise line stocks, uh, or actually no, never mind. Nah, they they they're just gapping every day. These things are so hard, but they are building a range. Maybe in a few days we're gonna have a better setup in these things. I just don't see anything good right now. Like nothing good. I literally don't see anything good. So I, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna let the market do its thing. Uh, WRTC, I don't know anything about a deal. I do know they have some kind of a, uh, you know, non-lethal crowd control thingy for police uh, departments. This thing popped on the Black Lives Matters riots. So I, I don't know anything about a deal in the in that thing though. <clears throat> Yeah, it's like a rope. Yeah, it's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, lasso. <laughs> it would it would be fun to buy one and just do do it to a friend or something. <laughs> you know, you see you see a buddy that comes at you, just shoot it at him and <laughs> wrap him wrap him up. <laughs> that would be so fun. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> How are the markets opening, by the way? Okay, we have a slight gap down, looks like. All right. Queues are uh, green, though, and most of my portfolio is green. I'm going to raise my IDEX stop a bit. I think if this SC can keep going to like 130s, 140s, 150s in a straight line, there's going to be an epic short opportunity here coming up. I'm I'm literally doing nothing. I'm just putting out some sell orders higher and just chilling out here. I I just don't see anything good. Like all the good entries were on Monday. I'm 
Yeah, Mark. Uh, this thing popped a few days ago on some PR. But now, right now it doesn't look that good. Oh, Idex took out yesterday's hod. Oh, sh oh, nice. I need to put some more cell orders out there. Yeah, I know, HCCH, yep, um, it's super thin, yeah, um, yeah, the entry was yesterday, damn it, I wasn't paying attention, hmm. yeah, it could be good, it could be good, HCCH, I agree, I have a bunch of these on watch, but I don't know. And also HCCHW, the warrant. This one actually has a has been going for a while. <clears throat> oh, I no triggering. Interesting. Uh, DraftKings. Uh, it looks good. If I can, if DraftKings can go sideways for a few more days, it's gonna be a five-star long setup. Uh, Sheg, uh, yeah, Sheg had a entry point yesterday. I guess it's buyable here. I think it's a bit slow mover, but it looks decent. Shuey, Shuey had an entry point yesterday too, but I guess it is buyable here. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, or th they haven't priced yet, right? DraftKings. So they upsized the offering a couple of times, but they haven't priced yet. Yeah, okay. Uh, GAM, uh, well, I would say DraftKings. But I mean, look, if one goes, they're both gonna go, I think. Um, Ideally, we get a few more days of sideways, but we'll see. I'm watching them both, but DraftKings is, uh, has a better short. Oh, okay, it's gonna be one of these days. Almost all green portfolio, nice. What can I say? Autopilot market. Raising my stop on this CS a little bit. <laughs> Amazing market. Uh, CS had a breakout yesterday. Today is not a breakout. Today is a chaser candle. Yesterday was the breakout on CS. We took out this range here. This was the breakout.
Doku, I think that one is a bit too extended. No, no, no. This is way too extended. They need to be close to the 10 or 20 day when you when you buy the breakouts. This is just, uh, you know, it's just straight up. Way, way too extended. Carb. Oh, yeah. That was a pet. Yesterday's pump stock had an insane fade intraday. Yeah, APT I bought yesterday. Uh, I hate this thing too, but you know, we are starting to see some more COVID related news. And, um, I, you know, I bought both Lake and APT yesterday. <sighs> Let's see, late day yesterday. I, I hate APT too. It's. Uh, like IMPX and APT have been two very annoying stocks. Yeah, MRNA looks it's it looks really good. It looks great on the 60 minute chart. It really does. Um INO is breaking higher. Yep, I mean th th these these things are starting to move. They are Bill <sighs> Feel like got shaken out a few days ago. Uh, maybe if we can go sideways a few more days. I'm not really, yeah. It's not ready yet. It had a nice little breakout on this day here. I don't for yeah. Again, I got shaken out. I got shaken out at the lows on this day. I can't believe it. Super annoying. But uh, yeah, a few more days. I, I, the, the the entry was like five dollars lower, six dollars lower. Now would be a chaser's entry. You gotta buy stocks at the exactly right, right time and right price. If you want, you know, if you if you want an edge. So it's very important to buy them as soon as they start breaking out not on the second day after they already up a bunch from the entry point uh, thoughts on roku uh it looks like shit. i it, it it's been a laggard for a while now i don't think it looks good It's not one of the momentum leaders. Uh, Labu looks good. This one I'm stalking. Like if you look at XPI, the like I think it's it's like a small mid cap biotech ETF. Uh, it looks great. It looks it looks amazing. You have a big big run from mid March to early May, and now it's been going sideways for about a month and a half almost, or a little bit over a month. It looks good. The large cap biotech index looks also really good or ETF, uh, but I think Labu is based on the small cap one. So yeah, Labu looks good. Like if X XPI breaks out, this thing could easily go to 60, 70. I am watching this thing. DraftKings is about to break out. Yeah, well, I mean, both the ETFs look the same. I mean, both IBB and XPI look pretty much similar. They look great. So I don't know about that. There's a bunch of small cap uh, biotechs that do really well. That are doing really well. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna trade 
uh, ETF. I'm not going to bother with the individual names. <coughs> This AMD is still setting up, like it's still building higher lows. Like I have to believe this thing has to break out one day and go, but it's been such a laggard for two months. But it is setting up nicely on the like old time frames, weekly, daily. It looks good. Just a laggard. Microsoft, okay, Microsoft is not a trading stock. It's way too slow. Um, or, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's too slow. Like, it's not a great day trading stock. It's not a great swing trading stock. It's a very slow name. ADR is 2.4%. That's the average daily range. Compared to something like Tesla, that is at 4.2%. Or something like, I don't know, Shopify, that's at 4.9%. You know, you want stocks with the high ADRs. Microsoft is a very, very slow name. I don't think uh, it's a great trading stock at all. Security selection is very important in this game. You want the fast moving names. You want the fastest moving, most liquid names when you trade. And cut all the random random stocks uh, out. It's, it's very hard to do. It takes many years. You only want to trade the best of the best. And look, for example, something like Nikola, ADR is at 20.8%. That's like, what, eight times higher than Microsoft. That's a huge difference. Uh, yeah, snap. Yeah, it's, it's a grinder. It's a grinder, what can I say? Yeah, no problem, Duplians. Um... Yeah, Apple is pretty slow too. Two point, Apple is even slower, 2.2% ADR. Yeah, th these are not trading stocks. They are, you know, they, they, they are great trading stocks if you have longer time frames, like for position trading. Uh, but for a day trade, shorter term trading, they're just not good. Because you can get more bang for your buck uh, on faster stocks. <coughs> AVTXF. Wait, what? A, V, T, X, F. I, I can't see, there is no such thing in TC2000. Butterface. MRNA, yeah, just wait for the breakout. I'm just waiting for this thing to at least start breaking that 66 area. Uh, 66, 67 areas, those are the, the, the areas I look, I look at on this thing. It is setting up really well. It's building higher lows on the 60 minute chart, a weekly chart, you know. I mean, once it breaks the 67, I think this thing goes back to 80. I really do. It looks super explosive. 
Codex? Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe. Bud? Uh, it's also one of these very slow names. Uh, U1K? Ah, oh, it's bouncing from yesterday. What's U1 doing? U1 is bouncing too. Uh, Spotify needs to set up. Like, it, it had a secondary entry yesterday. Uh, like, it had a great entry uh, when it broke out of this IPO base on the on the day it announced the Joe Rogan news. Um, and it had a breakout yesterday. Um, but right now, don't buy it here. You know, it's, it's, it's way out from the flag. It's way, way above the flag base here. You, you know, you gotta follow specific, you, you gotta buy as close to a base as possible. <clears throat> if you want an edge. Chasing is, um, it's not good. You know, just wait, wait. There, there's so many other stocks um, that are starting to set up, so. I wouldn't buy Spotify here. Or you could buy on pullback if that's your thing. Absolutely, you know, pullback to the ten rising 10, 20 day moving averages. Absolutely, GAN. Yeah, it's up a couple of percent. Which screen filters? My scans? Um. Sure. This is strongest scan. This scan uh, scans a specific watch list I have. Or the strongest stocks. Most of them are growth stocks. Then, like EP, these are uh, stocks that gap up 7.5%, or are up at least 7.5% uh, above yesterday's highs and at least 15 million in dollar volume. Then I have my momentum watch list, it's also a specific watch list I have. Pretty much scan stocks that are up today in that watch list above yesterday's highs. Uh, this OTC scan, you don't have to look, I'm gonna take it off. I don't trade OTCs ever. Like the OTC, OTCs are dead. They've been dead for many years. Uh, ETF scan. Uh, 30 million in dollar volume and 6% ADR. And then I have lower liquidity, higher, uh, higher ADR. These are pretty much like stocks that are not very liquid, but have a very high ADRs. So you can take a smaller position and still make decent money because the stock is likely to make a bigger move. So those are my intraday scans. Then I have my weekend and overnight scans. Um, also, which I use to build my watch lists. Pretty much, I, I pretty much uh, scan for the strongest stocks on every time frame, like one month, six months, three months, two years, one and a half years, etc. And they all look the same, like 60 million in dollar volume, 3.5 ADR, and uh, ranks among the 7% strongest. And they all look the same. The only difference is the time frame. Then I also scan for the biggest five-day gainers, 
60 million dollar volu volume and up 25 percent in the past five days uh, ADRs these are the foreign stocks they are you have to scan for them separately in TC2000 60 million in dollar vo volume and 3 percent ADR So those are pretty much my main scans. Then I also scan for the biggest losers, one, uh, you know, one and two year time frames, just to find the beaten down names that could make big moves. Wow, things are oh, things are just going straight up again. This market is insane, insane market, unbelievable market, <laughs> absolutely unbelievable. Guys, is there anyone struggling in this market? If you are, let's try to fix it. Feel free to tell me if you're struggling. Because this is this is like the best market ever. You're breaking even. What what are you trading? Do you, do you see David on the biggest losers scan list? Yeah. Every ticker starts with David. David one, David two, David three. What, what are you doing? Are you day trading, swing trading? EMPH, um, it, it bounced off the rising 150 day yesterday after the hit piece. Funny thing is I tweeted about these precious points uh, that hit this uh, EMPH yesterday. They also put out the hit piece back at six bucks in 2018 with a 1.01 .01 target here. Here, 25th of July 2018. We think it's turnaround is a sham, founded on accounting manipulation. We believe the stock is worth no more than 1.01 per share. Report available here. <laughs> and they hit it yesterday. The stock is over 50 bucks. I mean, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> So it's it's 50 times their price target or at their old price target. I don't know what their new price target was. Uh, you have day and swing trading. Okay, so you have so uh, fresh feeling. You you're swing trading, I guess. Okay, yeah, swing most. So you have MGNX. Okay. Where did you enter MGNX? On what day? Uh, and it's just one of these random illiquid stocks. Or, uh, I mean, look, it's just... This, this type of stocks don't have any institutional support. Like, they just, you know, retail pumps and then they go sideways. They're just very random. June 15, okay. June 15. Okay, so it was a good entry. That's a good entry. June 15. That's that's a very good entry. Yeah. Uh, but the, the the stock itself, I wouldn't have traded it. Um, okay, so let's look at ARCT. Uh, what day was your entry? Yesterday? Uh, why? Why yesterday? Like there is absolutely nothing here. It's like a. It's very random. Like you gotta find clean setups that are just, you know, close to the moving averages. This thing had already bounced well off the nearest rising moving average with 50 day. It's a very random entry. There's no edge there. Um, 
and also try to try to focus on stocks that are uh, that have rising 10 day and 20 day moving averages well there was a pause on the 16th but it doesn't make it a good setup oh okay okay I, okay I see I see what you mean so you know it bounced off the rising 50 day you missed it on this day so you bought it but yeah it's too random um, okay let's look at let's look at um, let's see where was it uh, uh, overstock let's look at overstock so you, yeah le, le, what day did you enter this thing <clears throat> yeah they're all uh, low volume stocks except for this overstock which is a bit more liquid yesterday overstock but okay again it's uh, it's it, it wasn't a, you know it needs to be tight it needs to come out of our range it's just uh, it's kind of hard to tell like look at this day here here it had a good setup i even marked this thing you know you have a clean move up it pauses goes sideways for a while puts in a tight range and then it bounces off this rising 20 day this is a five star setup these are the types of setups you should look for. Rising 10 day, rising 20 day moving averages. Uh, and let's look at, you lost sound. Can you guys hear me? You can hear me. Okay, so there are two losers lost sound. The two biggest losers in my chat, they're the only ones who lost sound, okay. We don't need them anyway. Yeah, Reno and the David. Ah, now you can hear me! Oh, now you can hear me, okay, okay. What an asshole. <laughs> they're like, I lost sound. He's, Reno, me too, yeah. And then I start talking shit about them, but, well, then they can hear me. Uh, okay, let's look at the, let's get back to fresh feeling. Uh, let's see, where is the, and you also have uh, Bill, okay. What day, day did you enter Bill? Fresh feeling. Today, okay, it, it's another one, like the, the entry was on this day here. Where, where I bought it because you know it made a big move had a bit of a pullback it undercut the 20 day but then it kind of started shaping up and then got tight and then it broke out of this um, tight range that was the entry this is not a good entry you gotta buy these things just as they come out of tight tight areas Yeah. Like, let, let's look at this the stocks I have in my portfolio, where I bought them or where I added to them. Uh, like, I have a lot of these random names, but let's look at specific ones. Like, ZS yesterday. That was the entry day, right? It 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 uh, broke out of this little flag here. It showed relative strength on Thursday and Friday when the market sold off. Or actually, it did show relative weakness on Monday. That was or Tuesday. That was random. But this was a decent setup. Not a great setup. I didn't buy it. I mean, from this day here. Let's look at Nvax. Okay. You see, this had a big, big move. Pulled back. Found support on the rising 20 days. Started building higher lows. Put in a tight, tight day, and then it broke out. That was a good entry. Let's look at Fastly. Um, this one I traded from here, uh, but it actually had a good uh, uh, entry on Monday. <clears throat> so it had a big move, just surfed at rising 10 and 20 days, got a bit tighter, and then it broke out of this range here. This was a good entry. I didn't buy it there again. Uh, I, I've been holding it for a while. Shopify had a big move, 
pulled back to the rising 20 day, went sideways, built higher lows, you know, got tight, and then it broke out on news. That's where I bought it, opening range highs. Net had a move, just kept surfing the rising 20 day, it got tight, and then it broke out of that tight area. That was a good entry. Uh, this is a random trade I'm in. Okta. <clears throat> now, I'm not super proud of this one. Um, better, it wasn't a super great setup. It's working because the market is good, but I bought it yesterday, opening range highs. Uh, but it's the same principle. Had a big move, pulled back to the rising 20 day, built higher lows, it got very tight here. Uh, better entry would have been uh, earlier, but that's you know I I you know I, I was I was bored yesterday. I wanted to make a trade and because I didn't trade anything. Livongo, like my recent entry here, big move, just kept surfing around the twenty along the twenty day, kept building higher lows. You know it got really tight here, and then it broke out. This was the entry. Tesla, same thing, had a big move, kept surfing the 20 day, it built a nice range, got really, really tight, built higher lows, and then it broke out. I anticipated, the setup was so good, I even bought it before it broke out. I bought it on this day here, and then I added on this day here. Dida, you know, look, they all look the same, you, you get my point now, this, this was the entry, okay? Zoom. Uh, Zoom was a little bit uh, of an other type of entry. Let's not talk about this one. I, I trade variations of setups. Uh, but, you know, you're getting my point by now. You you gotta, you, you can't chase, like you know, like random. Uh, you, you gotta find the linear stocks, the, the ones that make clean moves, and preferably just trade the liquid stocks. Um, because some of the stocks you had were pretty illiquid. They're just too random. They... they you know, you want to be in the institutional grade stocks because they tend to be more linear. The, the liquid names, they tend to be more retail driven and they, they move a little bit differently. Uh, okay, let's see. So, okay, I need to up yeah, update it. <sighs> yeah, this video is going to be on YouTube too, so I'm going to upload it after, after uh, the stream. I usually enter uh, opening range highs when I buy stocks. Where you place stop on bill, you always put the stop on the lows of the day. If you buy, buy opening range highs, you put it on the <laughs> open, uh, lows of the day. Uh, David, I'm not going to share any cake. I don't have a lot left. There's just only a, you know, just very little left. I'm not going to share that. Exactly. Stay. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to fight with Reno. Yeah, Trader Wickoff, I'm gonna get to you. I saw you wrote that earlier. I, 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 I'm gonna take the uh, questions and comments in order. Uh, so, uh, Fini Jens wrote, he put 100% of his account in TNA at 28 and now deep underwater. Well, I wouldn't say you're deep underwater, but okay, just, it's just one basic thing. You, you, do, you do not put any, you know, you don't put all your account in one stock or one ETF ever, especially not overnight. That's how you blow up. Uh, what day did you buy this thing? Uh, Tradul can, uh, asks, can you suggest if there is any best way to identify stock that has institutional support? Yeah, because they are linear, okay? They, they, they keep surfing these moving averages, right? They keep building these higher lows. They bounce off these major moving averages. And they have constantly high volume. It, you know, they're, they're mostly mid and large caps. Uh, if it's a small cap, it's probably not institutional grade. They move a little bit differently.
Lavo is triggering. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm reading the Darvas book. I think you recommended that. Yes, I did. The Darvas book is great. Still trying to work on my strategy and when, when to take. Probably need to let it start rather than... Yeah, use the 10 and 20 day uh, as your... Uh, uh, you know, like always sell every, you know, three, five percent up, sell some and then you keep the rest and use a uh, close below the 10 and 20 days to scale out the rest of your shares. You put your life savings in GAN. Well, good luck. <laughs> All I can say. All right, I'm gonna get to Trader Wick off now. Uh, many of the leaders like Livongo, Fastly will put, pull back 25% in a market correction of 10%. Yes, since you, uh, well, not necessarily. No, no, no. That's why you should look at relative strength. Uh, like the last market correction we had on Thursday, Friday, like this, that was a 5% correction, but many of these market leaders, they didn't even pull back. They went sideways. Uh, but yeah, sometimes when you get a bigger correction, yeah, the, the, the growth leaders do pull back more than the market. Uh, let's see. Since you have a large cushion in these stocks, do you hold them? No, uh, I, I, I look at the moving averages. Do they close below the 10 day? Do they close below the 20 day? Like a close below the 20 day, there's no, no, no reason to hold a stock. Unless it's putting in a higher low, like then I can hold some, but I, I will scale out. There is no reason to hold through bigger pullbacks, especially if you have big profits in a stock. It's better to wait for the correction to end and then you just buy the new ones that emerge. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you hold through big uh, drawdowns, you can, and if, especially if you're on margin, but you're not going to be on margin through uh, market correction because you, you're going to get rolling stop outs. When the market starts peaking, you know, and starts turning lower, you're going to get like every day, like if you have a portfolio like you have, like I have, every day a bunch of stocks are going to stop you out. So you, you're not going to be in a, in a, go through a market correction on margin like i'm on margin right now but you know every day stuff's gonna stop me out or i'm gonna get you know sized down we're not completely usually when uh when when it closes below the 20 day uh if it's if it has been running nicely uh or if it violates a higher low, or or if it just tops me out. <sighs> yeah, STGR broke out, uh, I think, yesterday. Oh, yeah, look. Um, mm, I don't know. It's a sloppy setup. It could work, but... I think it had two good setups a couple of months ago. Right now, it's... You know, I don't know. I don't like it very much. Will you hedge by, you know, sometimes I hedge by shorting the triple ETFs, like I did uh, on Thursday and Friday. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. If I, but, but only if I start, you know, see a good short setup. Like TQQ, I did see a good short setup. We were straight up. And then it started, you know, it gapped down and took out opening range lows midday. That was a good short setup. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I only like do the hedges or whatever you want to call them, when you actually get a good setup on these triple ETFs. Not because I think the market is going to tank or anything. You know, I always want the price action to confirm. No, only the ones that are close to my stop. Like something like Opus, right? Like this thing is 30% above my stop. There's no point in putting a hard stop on this thing. But something like... Uh, uh, I don't know. Let's look at maybe... Uh, now I don't really have any stocks that are close to my stops. But let's see if I had bought something today and it was very close to my entry, then I would put a hard stop on it. But I n almost never use hard stops. Or very rarely.
Okay, let's do another scan here. Hello to you too. Uh, let's see, how do you manage positions when are you closing position? For example, first to reverse D1 candle. I have no idea what D1 means. Why is golden Bitcoin lagging? Well, because Bitcoin is shit and gold is also shit. I don't know. <laughs> Nah, gold is setting up. Gold is in a big bull flag. I think it's gonna break higher and make a big move. I think this GLD is gonna go to like 200. Uh, it's setting up. It's building higher lows. Uh, like, I'm gonna trade it uh, with Chainag or Nugget, the gold miner ETFs. But they, I think gold is, uh, I think it is gonna make a big move. It is technically building a bull, uh, big bull flag here. <clears throat> what are your tips for anyone who wants to okay easiest one you need to research the markets okay you need to do like you need what you need to do is you need to like like get the tc2000 look at the monthly chart then you put up the watch list us stocks you go through every us stock and then you can have a instead of a volume you put a dollar volume here uh, and then you look at you know stocks that have you know at least say a billion or whatever in monthly dollar volume or five billion or whatever 10 billion you know just to get the more liquid names so you avoid the, all the super thin ones and then you go through all of these 49 46 stocks okay and what you're gonna look for are the stocks that say doubled in six, at least doubled in six months, or went up two, three hundred percent in a year, or f th four, five hundred percent in three, four years. You know, you look, you're gonna th create a separate watch list for every single stock that made big moves. Okay, maybe you're gonna get five hundred or whatever, three hundred, two hundred stocks that are liquid. You're just gonna go back to like you know, to the 90s or 80s. And then you're gonna look, just look at chart patterns. Like how do stocks move? Because stocks move in a very specific way. You, you get these, the same chart patterns occur over and over and over again. There's nothing new. You get the same chart patterns. There are some variations of them, but you, you got the same chart patterns in the 90s as you get today, right? That's the first thing you look at, just price action. Like you can put some indicators on, like I use the moving averages, but you can use whatever indicator you want. Don't use too many, okay? Too many indicators is for suckers. Use a few. I would recommend moving averages. And then you look at the, you know, the biggest moves and look at how did they act? Like when they pulled back, like how do they act in a pullback? Which moving averages do the best stocks uh, like uh, obey, right? You look at all of that stuff. You build a database in your head. You spend a thousand hours doing that. Just, you know, print the charts out. You know, I have a big Evernote database with thousands and thousands of them. Like, I have thousands. Like, I have, you know, tens of thousands of charts, right? You... And then you start looking at fundamentals and news, et cetera, et cetera. Like, w what is driving? What, what makes a stock go up 500% in a year, right? You spend another thousand hours doing that. 
and boom, before you know it, you're going to have $10 million in your accounts. I promise you. Uh, with that being said, I need to turn out, uh, on my AC. I'm dying from heat here. And then I'm going to eat my cake. Be right back. Anyways, poker face. Uh, that's what you have to do to get your returns from uh, decent double digits to triple digits. You need to spend a lot of hours on you. Um, AAL, you're in from 1650. Uh, I mean, it is setting up. AAL is actually setting up nicely on the long side. If it can go sideways today and break out over the seven, low 17s tomorrow, there could be a long setup there. All, yeah, AAL is, yeah, AAL save is not as good. Yeah, AAL looks good. I like AAL. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't understand your entry, uh, but uh, it is setting up. On the long side, you're hearing 3673. Okay, that's not a well. It is a decent. It's a decent. It's a decent, uh, decent uh, pricing for a stock that is up this much. That's pretty decent pricing. What you uh, would you recommend as a minimum workable account side for you for my swing strategy? If you want to make a living, uh, probably 500k at least or 300k. Like if you're only gonna swing trade. Uh, but if you like do you know work part time or work full time and uh, trade part time. And you don't need tra to trade for, you know, take out money from your trading accounts. You could do it with, you know, 10k. Because, you know, if you double your 10k every year, like you double it on year one, like after taxes, you're going to have 20k the next. You're going to have 40k the year after, 80k, 160, 320, <clears throat> you know. Even with your, like a small 10k account, you, you're gonna have millions after six, seven years, once you get profitable. Assuming you don't put more money in it, right? So, but if you're gonna live off of it, you probably need at least three, five hundred k. Because with my strategy, you, you're gonna go sideways. Your your equity is gonna go sideways for months and months at a time every year. <clears throat> like the markets we are in right now, that's, you know, it's a rare, rare market. That doesn't happen most of the time. It's almost too easy right now, you know, it's almost too easy. Like everything just keeps going straight up. It's like the best time for my type of swing st uh, trading strategy right now. But most of the time it's going to be a struggle. Uh, I don't know what Mary Ledge is. If Mary is gonna give you an edge, use Mary Ledge. If 
but I don't know what it is. A broker platform? If you're just gonna go long, any broker platform works. But if you want the best shorts, um, you gotta go with Centerpoint Securities. Bank of America trading, okay. As long as it's uh, fast and doesn't lag when the market is under stress. Hey guys, you wanna see PNL? Do you do you want me to jinx the markets? Yes, do it. Yeah, <laughs> David, don't jinx it. Okay, it's at two four two against. Okay, I need more votes. Come on, I need more yes votes. Fuck David and his uh, bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, there are more yeses than noes, fuck you, David. <laughs> okay, this is from pre-market, like this is the state of my accounts right now. <laughs> then I have also a third account that is very small, uh, I'm not gonna show it here, it's like insanely small. This is this is the this is where we are at right now. Like yesterday, I was up 700k and I did one trade, right? Just by sitting in a bunch of trades that kept going up. This is when you have a great portfolio in a great market. You just keep going up, 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 and you just have to manage. You know, sell some and trail the rest. And on Tuesday, I was up like 500k. And Monday too. Like, it's insane. Like, I, I mean, I've been saying it for a while. This, mar this market is like the... You know, I don't know. I've never seen this good of a market. Yes, I use some margin. Not as much as I used to before, but I use some. Like, I think I, I, half the money I made in trading, I made in the past two and a half months, three months. I'm not even kidding. It's insane. They've been so violent, all of these stocks. We had the earnings scalpers like a month ago. Most of them are straight up, like, fastly. Remember, is anyone still in fastly with me? Guys, is anyone in fast? It's a double. It's a double from the opening range highs on the earnings day. Is anyone in? You are in? Oh my god. Thank you. Good. Very good. Is anyone in Tesla still? From where it broke out of this five star range? You entered later. Okay, good. Now PDD, another one. Is anyone in PDD from the high tide flag breakout at 50 bucks or 51 or so? This thing is up like 60% since. Twilio, another one. Anyone still in Twilio from the earnings day? Yes, I do use trailing stops. The 10 and 20 day moving averages. Guys, for those of you who are new, go to my Twitter, look at the pinned tweet, and watch the two videos that are over there. A lot of your questions will be answered. You're in Twilio and CES from earnings? Very good. You're gonna be a multimillionaire. If you're not already. Wow, cruise lines are gaining steam here.
Guys, you, you only need one bull market to get rich and change your financial futures. You, you only need one bull market. Learn the setups, learn what moves markets, learn, what, learn, learn what, how stocks move, learn what moves stocks. <coughs> you know, memorize the patterns and you, you only need one bull market to change your finances forever. And now I'm just talking about this specific like breakout and earning strategy. There are obviously other strategies I use too, but right now I don't have any any shorts on or any meaner version trades on. So <clears throat> how do you trade, like, Uncle Cheesy? That's why you sell uh, some into strength. Then you don't have to worry about the pullback. Like, for example, PDD looked scary when it bro uh, when it uh, you know it was straight up. Uh, it was far above both the 10 and 20 day moving averages. It looked really scary. I'm like, oh, but you know, I had sold some, and I knew like, okay, I'm gonna wait for the close below the 10 day before I sell you know m m uh, big chunk of my position, and then I'm gonna wait for the close below the 20 day to sell all and look what it did it, it undercut the 10 it actually closed at the 10 day I did size down some just to be safe and you know it's straight up since same thing with SC it looked very scary several times like here on this day I'm like oh I'm gonna give back all my profits but nope it just bounced off the 10 day and went straight up and now it looks scary again right looks like a reversal day and you know one of these days is gonna top out right one of these there will be a day that comes like oh I should have sold it all but that day could come at 150 so that's one of the things I learned when I studied stocks you know no matter how high a stock has gone as long as it's a you know above the 10 day it can still go much higher and that I got th th that lesson I learned several times on like Tilray. This thing went up several thousand, like a thousand percent in a month. You know, just above the ten day all the time. TVIX. This is not a stock, but it's the same principle. Above the ten day all the time. Beyond Meat. A couple of years ago, uh, it's not below the ten day. I, I meant above the ten day. You know, it's a 10, the strongest stocks, they serve the 10 and the 20 day moving averages. Tesla, another one. Above the 10 day, this whole time, look at this, above the 10 day, it bounced off the 10 day every single time. So the 10 and 20 day, those are the main moving averages. If you play, if you trade these uh, fastest moving momentum stocks and the super fast moving, you gotta be even faster, but so there's all these variations of every setup. GM. Damn, David, the cake is really good. Just so you know. It's the best cake I've had in months. It's the best cake, or it's the only cake I've had in months, but still, it's really, really good. I just wanted you to know. Uh, MGM, look, MGM looks exactly like the cruise lines and airlines. They're all the same trade. 
I still think we need one, a few more days, one or two more days, but it is setting up as a potential long. Like, it, it looks pretty much exactly the same as AAL, UAL, RCL, CCL, they, they all look very similar. They had big runs of the lows, had big runs, they got it rejected, pulled back, found support on the rising 20 day. You see this? They all look the same. And MGM is uh, among those. German chocolate? No, Swedish cake. Zynga? Uh, it is setting up. It looks like a decent setup. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a momentum leader, but uh, yeah, it could work. A few more days of sideways, it would look pretty decent. MSGS? MSGS, what is this? No. Madison Square Garden? No, avoid. This is like the biggest laggard ever. It, it hasn't even bounced off the lows. It looks like shit. Avoid this thing. Yeah, search share money. You mentioned GAN 10 times. Yes, I know, but there is no buy point here. <laughs> there was a buy point when it bounced off the 20 day. I missed it. It's just in limbo right now. It could go to 50, sure, but you need specific buy points. GAN has a lot of momentum, yes, it has. It, ha it has doubled in the past few weeks. But you still need specific buy points if you want to make it in this game. Uh, AAL looked good. Oh, yeah, no, it looks decent. You know, <coughs> Use loser a day as you stop and you're going to be fine, I think. It is setting up. I like the setup. <coughs> uh, not for today, but for tomorrow. NVAX? Yeah, NVAX. Yeah, yep. I, I uh, fat fingered it, but yesterday I accidentally sold a whole, all of my shares and then I had to chase like 10 cents to get, get my position back. Uh, but I didn't get all of it back, so yeah, I sold a few too many. Uh, but yeah, NVAX. This is what a perfect high tide flag looks like. You have a big, big move. It's a momentum leader. It Pulls back, goes sideways, gets tighter and tighter. You can clearly see it on the daily chart. Look at how tight it got. Bounced off the 20-day, and then it started building higher lows. Got super tight, and then it broke out of this range. Look at the 60-minute chart. Look at this candle. This is where I bought it. 48-ish. At 48 area. That's where I bought it. I had like I bought it. I had three entries on it. Look at how perfectly look good it looks. Look at these higher lows on the 60 minute chart. And then you get the breakout candle. This is a five star setup. We were all over it. And now it's straight up. Up 20% in uh, just a few sessions. Looks perfect. Another one that looks similar is MRNA. This one is also building higher lows on the daily and 60 minute charts and getting building a really tight range here. I think this is going to be a big mover once it breaks out. This kid could easily go to 80, 90. Maybe it goes to 100. In this market, anything is possible. Macy's. It's, it looks exactly like the other beaten down uh, like cruise lines and airlines. Had a big move of the lows. Pulled back. Found support on the rising 20 day. And I was building... Uh, higher lows like if it can go sideways for a few more days there could be a buy setup here coming up but you know it looks exactly like AAL, UAL, DAL, CCL, NCLH, MGM they all look the same um, I would actually trade one of the others because they are higher priced Macy's is uh, low priced I don't like low priced stocks would I consider ADAP here? No, uh, no, it's a very thin phase one biotech. This thing, uh, no, I wouldn't. Stick to the liquid names. This thing barely trades. 
like the setup looks good. Like like the the chart looks good, but focus on the more liquid names. This is a very speculative uh, early stage biotech. CrowdStrike, uh, yeah, no, nah, maybe in a few days, it is setting up, but it, it needs a few more days, I think. <clears throat> Fastly, probably should set some cell orders on this thing. Insane market, I can't believe it. Unbelievable market. Everything just goes straight up. This is why you have to focus on the momentum leaders, because those are the ones that have the best moves. You can't trade random stocks, you have to play, play the uh, liquid momentum leaders. So if you trade random stocks, you're gonna get random results. And you don't want random results, you want good results. Okay, SC looks like it's reverse, reversing a bit. I, I, will, I only have about a third of my position left. Or maybe even less than a third. I don't remember. If I, I think I bought 15,000 shares when it broke out here. In the 50... Uh, where was it here? 57 area. So, and I only have 3,900 shares left. So maybe, yeah, about a third or maybe even less quarter maybe <clears throat> all right uh, zoom uh, I mean it depends on how long it goes sideways if you can go sideways for several weeks that could be a setup right now it's very extended but I still think it goes like 270 yeah, Shopify is finally going. It stopped me out on day one once, and then I rebought it, and then it almost stopped me out the second time. But thankfully it didn't, and now it's straight up. Now, now they can't get enough of it. They just had to stop me out, right? And now they can't get enough of it. You know? Why buy at 780 when you can buy it at 855? I, buy, I love the markets. Efficient market theory. What a bunch of bullshit. NRGU. What about NRGU? Uh, it's a piece of shit uh, leveraged oil ETF. Avoid this thing. It's just a random oil ETF. These things are poison. Avoid it. There's nothing here. There's no setup here. Peloton, good entry. Uh, no, not no. It's a, uh, it's it's a bit sloppy here. The good entry was here, and obviously I didn't buy it because I suck. I'm an idiot. This was the good entry. Uh, since then, it's been kind of a sloppy. It's been it's riding the rising 20 day, but for for an entry, it's not a good, good setup. Nope, no futures, no options. You don't need. You don't need. You don't need any of that. Stick to stocks and ETFs.
Uh, how many shards have you opened on you? Well, right now none, um, because it's so slow. I'm not really watching anything. I'm just managing my positions. But when it's uh, when when uh, I have a lot of stuff on watch, I I have another two monitors with uh, shards or three monitors even. Which stock should I get into now? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Any stock? You're doing a little test? Uh, Nori? Uh, it is setting up. Very thin recent IPO, but it is setting up nicely. It, it look, this, this thing, this is the type that can really go. Super big strength. Uh, it's a very interesting company. I even read up a little bit on it. Uh, it looks good, uh, but it's super thin. But yeah, it can go. It's building higher lows as we speak. This is, yeah, this thing could go once it breaks out. Absolutely. How do you white? You don't. You're always gonna have something that gaps down. That's what stops are for. And sometimes things gap down below your stop. And well, what can I say? Life sucks. Shit happens. That's why you have a portfolio. That's why you never go all in in one stock. And that's why you avoid the worst, uh, like the most speculative stocks, like phase one biotechs and stuff like that. What did I struggle with? <laughs> exactly, all in mRNA. What could go wrong? Insiders have been selling. It's at no split valuations. They're probably not going to make any money on their uh, uh, vaccine. What can go wrong? <laughs> yeah. Now, having said that, I think mRNA is one of the best setups I see. I, you know, but not for today. Uh, maybe for tomorrow or later this week. Or wait, what day is it? Is it Thursday or Wednesday? It's Thursday. Okay. <sighs> What did I struggle with when I moved from day to swing trading? Oh, pfft. everything? I struggled with everything? Pretty much everything was a struggle. It's hard. It's very hard. When you're trying to switch styles, it's very hard. You know, once you are, when you're finding a setup to trade, to make money off, you know, consistently, it's hard. It takes a lot of time and patience. And then you, you know, you want to switch your style. It's also hard. It takes time. It took me over a year to go from day trading only to mainly swing trading. It took me well over a year, probably two years. Shui, I uh, already, yeah, it's. Uh, it had a little bit of a breakout yesterday. Uh, it would be better if it can go sideways for a few more days. QRVO. No, it's not a good supply. It's not a good uh, setup yet. Maybe in a few more days, but it's not really a momentum leader. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe if it, yeah, another two three days of sideways, maybe. Labo. Labo is breaking out. I don't. Uh, <sighs> XBI, IBB, man. I'm, I'm tempted to buy some. Just because I'm bored out of my mind, I'm gonna buy some Labo. Or wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Do I have the buying power for it? I'll buy some Labo, why not? I, I'm just so bored. I need to trade something. I'm getting withdrawal symptoms here. I bought 15,000 shares, a small starter. Uh, one second, I got a phone.
Okay, I'm back. I am back. Can you hear me? Man, I have this buddy who talks a lot. <laughs> he just broke up with his girlfriend, so he needs to talk out a little bit. All right, all right, let's see here. Uh... <laughs> David, there's no way I'm gonna pass the mic to you. Uh, do I see a range breakout on Fiverr? It had a range breakout on Monday. The 62-63 area was the entry on, on Fiverr. Now it's just chasing. Betai? Uh, Betai? I don't see anything here, no. W W had an entry last week here in the one eight, low one eighties low mid mid one eighties. Now it's just in the middle of nowhere, or it's uh, in limbo. Uh, okay, let's see. Someone hacked my account. No, yeah, it was a Mickey Mouse pattern until it became a panda. Pac-Man and Golfic pattern. <laughs> Nicola? Uh, no, not yet. It's just in, it's still inside of its range. It's still building higher lows and lower highs. We'll see where it breaks okay I need to let's see how things okay CS new highs NVAX new highs uh, fastly I think I sold some fastly already Idex, let's see, Lob, Shopify, wow, straight up today, <laughs> straight up, 900 next target, D-Dog, I need to sell some of this one, it's up 4%, I'll sell a few shares, <clears throat> Okta looks great, it's like it's the most amazing market ever. Wow, I, I can't believe this. You, you, you literally don't even have to do anything. All you have to do is you know sell on someone's strength and then trail, trail the rest. I'm chinxing myself really hard right now. I know, but it it, it is what it is right now. <clears throat> no. Uh, Uncle Cheesy, I just went through that. You can re-watch the video when I upload to YouTube. I spent like 15 minutes going through good setups. This is a good setup. Okay, it was riding the 20 day, took a pause, put in a tight range, and then it broke out of this tight range. Now, if you would buy it now, today, this is chasing. The tight range was down here in the 62, 63s. This is just a random up candle on a random short pattern. There's no edge here. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna do one more scan and then I'm gonna cut the stream. I need to go to the store and get some food. Oh wow, you won. Maybe we get a trade on it on, uh, tomorrow on the short side. Haven't shorted in a while. I don't even remember. How 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 uh, how you short? Haven't shorted in like three days. You feel cheated today? No. You, why? Why do you feel cheated, David? A free stream? <laughs> what? Yes, I need to dust off the short button. 
And you were on the phone, yeah. Funny thing, I didn't lose a lot of viewers. Most of you stayed, even though I was uh, not talking for 30 minutes. I felt like I would lose a lot of people. I didn't. <laughs> come back for the close. I should just go away and come back like f last five minutes. See how many are still here. <laughs> uh, Beyond Meat? Uh, let's see. No. The entry was here in the uh, mid-low 140s. Uh, uh, right now, it's again, it's just a random chart pattern. You have to wait for the specific entries, guys. If you want to make it in this, uh, in this, in trading, uh, you have to wait. You 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 need to study how stocks move. You need to, you know, you have to buy at the low risk, high probability entry points. <clears throat> for those who who haven't been here the whole stream. I'm going to upload the stream on YouTube and you need to watch it because I go through uh, setups. I go to, through specific setups, like what to buy and what not to buy. And then you need to do your own research. Don't take anything I say for granted. You, you need to learn these patterns. You need to do it. There are no shortcuts. If you want to make millions and even tens of millions, you need to learn this for you, you need to memorize these chart patterns and you can't hesitate. Once you see it, you have to, you know, like you, you can't hesitate. You have to attack it. <clears throat> That's where you need to be at. Uh, a couple of thousand is enough for me. <laughs> Leave, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I left the stream on for the weekend. I got like 13 followers. Tuna Tartare? What the hell is that? Why are you linking me Tuna Tartare? It looks delicious, by the way. Oh, you're eating... Are you eating that for breakfast? What the fuck? What is wrong? What kind of psycho eats food like this for breakfast? A multi-millionaire. Only a multi-millionaire. Look at this guy. Tuna Tartare for breakfast. It looks delicious. I wouldn't eat it for breakfast, but it looks fucking delicious. Holy shit, it looks great. Yeah. It really does. Definitely not a loser, yeah. I don't eat sush drumming for breakfast, no. I ate it like 20 years ago and... Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, thanks for joining today, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you got value out of the stream. <laughs> the loser membership costs zero dollars. <laughs>